Hey, everybody, it's Pete Carmasino here at Chicken Analytics for this week's halftime show on Stock Charts TV. Appreciate you tuning in. It's Monday afternoon, uh, June 27th, 2022, and we're off to um, sort of a mixed start here on the markets today. And I mean, as I'm recording, uh, we're kind of uh, off the worst levels of the day, but also off the best levels of the day. So we're somewhere in the middle. Um, and we're just seeing mixed markets just in general, right? There's really no narrative for the move higher uh, other than oversold conditions and obviously some rebalancing and things that are happening here, here in the market. So um, got a lot of push and pull from energy, uh, recession talk, inflation, food, um, rising rates, you know, you name it. Uh, the market's getting a dose of almost everything now. It's never quiet in the markets, but at the same time, we're just seeing more and more uh, headwinds that turn into tailwinds and, and vice versa, because what's normally happening is people are kind of recalibrating, reassessing risk, but it's happening so fast that you do get these whipsaws. And so we're just trying to, again, we don't want to be overly bullish. We don't want to be overly bearish. We want to be realistic. And that's kind of where we, that's our process. And that's where our power gauge comes into play, right? It's fundamental. And then you overlay technicals because you will get different readings, uh, sometimes very bullish, sometimes very bearish um, on both the technicals and the fundamentals. And sometimes, and not all the time, but it's very frequent that you'll see technicals move or indicate a move before, tech, uh, before fundamentals. And we're kind of seeing that in one area. So I'm going to focus on just a couple of things um, in general today. But one of the things I'm going to look at is the bullish percent on the S&P and how we've kind of been tracking that week to week. We're looking at what we call corrections in a bear market, which are bear market rallies. And that's the opposite of a correction in a bull market. Bull market's moving higher. You move a step back five, six, 10% sometimes, and then you move higher. On a bear market, you're moving lower and you get those rallies five, 10% higher, and then a stair step occurs. So I think we're in rally uh, two rallies have uh, really completed. We might be in the third rally. And I'll just show you the chart that we've kind of shared with some of our members and how we're looking at it. And then I'm going to look at the renewable energy sector. Why? Well, a couple things. Energy has been on really a tear, a bullish move higher. Commodities have been running hot for a while. It's not just happening uh, this year. It's happened for the full year almost. Um, but you started to see you know, wheat, corn, corn, soybeans, all the agricultural areas of the market were, were moving higher. And so was oil um, and natural gas and the other sort of fossil fuel commodities, coal in general too. So we started to see uh, energy sell off and there's a narrative around there that maybe people are kind of reducing some positions, maybe taking some profit because the profits were big if they were in it for a while. And two, maybe they're trying to get away from sort of the dirty energy stocks. And that could be creating an opportunity on the renewable side. So I'm going to look at the renewable index today. And we're going to look at some names on both the Chaikin system and on the ACP platform that I've kind of located. And we'll just go over the process and see, you know, what we see. That's basically what we're supposed to be doing, right? We got to do our research. So you can all look at the charts. And then you're trying to find, obviously, some moves um, that are either attempting to happen or could happen, but you always got to use risk, risk management. So let's take a look at the charts and see what we see. All right, folks, we're back here at the ACP platform. And this is just one of the charts that I share uh, with our users. And, um, you know, we do a daily note. I'm the chief market strategist. So we put out just some discussion, uh, educational videos and notes, kind of like we're doing here, uh, but some uh, sometimes in a longer format. But what I've been using is the bullish percent chart. Somebody asked me how I put these on. I mean, basically got to get in there and start messing around with the ACP platform. Um, there's so many ways to, to look at bullish percent. I really like this way in general. Um, but if you, if you can take a chart and you, if I click here, you can see where I overlaid it. I just picked up the symbol, right? It's a price indicator. You had the symbol, uh, auto interval, basically it'll change with the chart. And then I just chose a histogram. Um, and that's kind of the way I like to display it because it just shows me uh, red for down, you know, uh, the gray scale for up. And um, what I'm seeing is one rally here, a second rally right here, and maybe the beginning of a third rally. Now, bullish percent has increased every time in all three of those rallies. But in general, on all these indices, I've got the New York stock, the NYSE composite up top, 
I've got the NASDAQ composite in the middle. I've got the S&P uh, down at the bottom. And so every time we've seen these rallies in the S&P, we're seeing the bullish percent move higher to that trend line. So again, just looking at, just go to the left side of the chart. Look at the move higher. We saw pullbacks, move higher, pullbacks, move higher, pullbacks. That's just the nature of markets. They don't go up in a straight line. But to me, it seems like it might be searching for the pre-pandemic highs. And we could see that. And so um, that's kind of what I'm looking at. So let's look at, let's look at the uh, chart or the list that I made today, renewable energy stocks. And I'm going to start with the index itself. So the Dow Jones uh, U.S. Renewable Energy Equipment Index. Now, you know, that's going to incorporate a lot of different types of companies in here. So um, we got to have a little bit of uh, flexibility in kind of what we're viewing. But for me, on a longer term basis, if I squeeze this chart just by using my mouse here, um, I can see where the top was and what's happening, right? So it, you're looking at a change in the, in the overall group, a potential change. Two things that strike me are the potential crossover of the 20 over the 50. And obviously I see a higher low here, but I do not see a higher high. So that's an anticipatory opportunity. Um, it may or may not come true. But if I start to look at, if I wanted to say draw a trend line um, and I picked up the opportunity to potentially find an area of a breakout, to me, we're very close to that opportunity. So I want to start building a watch list in the group, right? And I did that by just going through several of just a couple ETFs. And so what I'll show you now is on Chaikin Analytics, um, I've got the iClean, which is the, you can see here, the iShares Global Clean Energy ETF. Also looking very similar to the equipment index, right? You can see that long drawn out sell off and starting to move higher. I do have relative strength changing as well, which I do like. And obviously there's a, a plethora of different names in here. The other index is TAN, T-A-N, which is the uh, iShares, I'm sorry, the Invesco uh, solar ETF. Also a very similar pattern. So you can see already we've got three similarities in three different baskets, all kind of com comprised of very similar stocks. There's a tons of overlap. My point being is, is that they're all kind of signaling a change in trend. Doesn't mean it's a run out and a buy and that kind of thing. These aren't recommendations. We're just kind of teaching and how to look at the, look at the charts. So if I go back to the ACP platform and I click on the power gauge and um, I start to look at just some different names and I'll, I'll look at the percentage gainers here today, like uh, Jinko Solar. Now, a lot of people um, know uh, this name and it's a very popular name. So we'll, um, you know, uh, uh, DQ will be a pilot, Solar Edge is a popular name, Enphase is a popular name, but check, check out Jinko Solar. It's bullish on our rating. Um, it's formed a bit of a base here. It's kind of changed trend a few different times. It's been sold off and back and forth. And again, it's having its own internal corrections, what, like a lot of things do. But if I go and I take a look um, at what JKS is looking like on our chart, I've had a relative strength change uh, back from April and it's been a, a battle. It's not really able to break out. It's kind of in a range um, and it's really not even at the top of the level here, but it's up a good percentage today, over 9%. So there's some action here for sure. And I think, you know, you want to start to take a look at these names when you have the opportunity. Again, we don't want to chase, we don't do anything. Uh, but I do want to point one thing out. Uh, this morning on CNBC, you saw uh, a legendary investor, uh, John Doerr, come out and talk about an epic transition from fossil fuel uh, to a clean energy. He made a good point. And the point that he said was, uh, or made was that you, it's much easier to um, ramp up renewable energy versus fossil fuel. We all know that. At the same time, there, there's some regulatory issues. And there's all kinds of things that have to be kind of dealt with. So maybe, potentially, maybe there's a catalyst here for that partic particular um, opening of the opportunities out there. Now, it's not like they haven't been doing well, right? They just haven't been doing great. Um, like a lot of things in general, it got, these, these names got sold off with the market um, overall. But when you talk about 
shortages of chips and things of that nature and supply chain issues, they're very susceptible to that. And so you've got that same problem, right? When you start to consider not just the industry, but what the outside factors in the industry are. So let's look at Enphase ENPH, which is another, you know, widely followed and anticipate, anticipated name of, you know, opportunity. Now it's already broken the 50, um, I'm sorry, the 20 is above the 50. You're seeing the MACD and the RSI all in line looking great. And again, the stock's up 5% for a $200 name. That's uh, pretty impressive. However, we are, we're what we call neutral negative. All that means is it's a bearish name from our fundamental rating. Okay, you look at the fundamental rating, you can see financials are weak, technicals, experts. If I look at experts, I don't see a high level of short interest. So I'm not, Maybe I'm getting some short covering here. I don't know. But this chart tells me, you know, there's an interesting opportunity here. Now, they got earnings coming out in July, so you got to always be careful about that. But it just filled that gap, kind of stayed around in this range, and has been really just a seesawing back and forth above and below this long-term trend line. So um, interesting opportunity. Is oversold, according to our indicator, relative strength is, is positive. As I said in the beginning of this video, sometimes technicals will be ahead of fundamentals. Sometimes the when doesn't tell you why, right? So when you should be looking at it is already potentially uh, forming, right? It's materializing in front of us. The why may not be known. Maybe there's a catalyst. Maybe there's something that's happening. Maybe this is, you know, with China opening up and supply chain constraints loosening just a little bit. Um, there maybe there's some opportunity here, but that's why I like to look at all of the situations. Where was the catalyst? What, you know, did somebody say something? Is somebody upgrading it? Obviously we've got high energy prices. That's an, a catalyst enough, you would think, but there's other things uh, going on as well. The other one is um, DQ, which I'm going to de decal uh, new energy. I, I'm, I'm assuming the other, that's how you uh, 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 say the name uh, or pronounce the name. And um, this is just an interesting chart because it probably had a few different things going on for it. But if I look at the description of the company, um, you know, they're obviously uh, a photovoltaic product manufacturer in China. And so they had their own issues with regulation, things of that nature. But um, it's, a, it's part of these indexes and it's starting to move. So a nicer looking chart, I would think it's oversold and already moving out of that range. And so um, I, I just would implore you to kind of look through the different areas, again, the two ETFs you want to look at are TAN and iClean. I'm sure there's other ones out there that I, I maybe overlooked. And I apologize for that. But these are the two. Now, there's two other names um, when we talk about renewables and we talk about electric vehicles and all those other things that are going into sort of the construction of the electrical grid. And it's Mastec MTZ, again, with a neutral plus rating. So good fundamentals. It's just below trend. Look, it's a very bullish situation here on our power gauge, but it's below the long-term trend. And the other one is Quanta Services, uh, symbol PWR. Those two names you want to look at as well. Before I leave, I just want to let you know that uh, I'm on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter. We kind of put out some different things. Um, just, just again, some random musings, what's going on. I'll put out uh, things I call out that you may want to take a look at from other uh, sources, but follow me on Twitter to kind of get some of those more up-to-date, uh, you know, uh, pressing issues that might be happening and occurring uh, week to week and, you know, before the videos come out. But I want to say, um, take a look at all of the opportunities out there. Again, the Power Gauge, all the ACP platforms, uh, you know, all the solutions inside of the technical opportunities there, but always look at the trends, see what's happening, look for the catalyst. We know energy prices are high and maybe renewables are going to get into the game and sooner than we think. So um, again, start building a watch list. Don't lose the faith and keep the process. Take care. We'll talk to you next week. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with stockcharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and we hope you did, Hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.